welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, if you're new here, and I am a homeschool mom of two little ones. My daughter is five and my son is three and a half, and then I have another one coming in September this year, 2019. And I wanted to just give you a little real life update of how our schoolroom slash dining room went and some of the products that I loved and some of the things that didn't really work well. So I'm just going to do a walkthrough, kind of casual. I didn't really clean up anything before I'm filming this, so let's just uh, show you around. Okay, so it's a little bit dark in here, so that's why I have my light on. Sorry if that's a little awkward, but this is our room. I'll leave a link to my original video of when we first started the school year. And this is kind of what it looks like now. So let's start over here. Before I had my three tier shelf, which is now behind me in my living room area where our puzzles are. And now I have this really cool low profile bookshelf. This was one of my favorite purchases of the year. It's um, from Target and it's the Pillow Fort brand. So it was a little bit expensive, although I think I got it during like a uh, furniture sale. <laughs> so, uh, but it definitely is worth the expense. It's a really nice quality. It was really easy to put together and it has just this low profile to where my kids can easily put away books and also uh, pick out books and see all the things instead of a tall bookshelf. And then under here I have my library and or my morning basket books for a unit study that we're going through. It's all about bugs. So all those are bugs. And that is just a backup whiteboard. It's like one that's huge. And so we've used it as a flat surface on the floor for making structures, also just for drawing and writing and having a big space on the floor. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we have, because we have carpet in here. And we do have a big table, but sometimes that table <laughs> has been messy or something, or we just like to have a different place to do our stuff. So that will get removed from that spot and be put on the floor. And that's that. Over here, I found this on Google Images, <laughs> and I just printed it off for like a dollar at Office Depot and um, put it up on my whiteboard when I'm not using my whiteboard. So it was just something instead of a big white rectangle. <laughs> um, it's still kind of small and doesn't really fill the whiteboard, but at least it's a little something. Down there is a power tool charger, um, <laughs> which is just temporarily there. This is a magnet board. I think I, this is definitely um, something that we love. Even when kids come over and play, we just have the foam magnets and I really like having this. I've had this for a long time since my daughter was like one and a half. Taught her her letters and things on there. So that is actually pretty hidden from your view site. Um, to so it's just kind of like down low and somewhere where they can actually reach a whiteboard all right over here is a bookshelf i think i had this when we first started school yeah i think i we, i built this right before we started school and it kind of is all laid out similarly although these used to be where all of our books were <laughs> but Recently and over the course of the school year, I have bought a lot more books. So these are only books from the library and my, our library <laughs> that we actually own. Books that we are using for our unit study. We're going through the Good and the Beautiful, the arthropod bug study. And so that's why there's all of these books here. And the reason they're not down where the kids can get them is because they're more reference books, resource books, books that I would actually need to read to them instead of them just looking through. So really good. Um, and then all my other books are downstairs in my basement where I kind of have my overflow of homeschool stuff. And this is a reading area. Um, it's kind of, I don't really use it that much, so I might change it out for next year because it just stores like all of the easy readers and stuff for my daughter and our manners book and kind of like our, um, just behavioral books and how we teach, yeah, different behaviors and manners and things like that. Down here, I have puzzles that are big and kind of like learning puzzles. So ones that didn't really fit nicely in a bin in our living room. And honestly, the one that gets used the most is the alphabet train one. It looks like that. 
and it's very long. It's a floor puzzle, and so they really like that. They also have some rhyming words and some different puzzles that are in here. These are really nice bins. I got these at Target when they were on clearance, when our store was kind of going through a facelift. So I think they still sell these, not clearance. Um, they're Pillow Fort brand again, but very durable. I have a couple of them. Two of them's not turned around the right way. This is just numbers. Um, so we have number boards and number blocks. These are math manipulatives, and I actually switched curriculums halfway through the year. I no longer use Saxon math. I'm using the Good and the Beautiful math, but all of the Good and Beautiful's curriculum all fits in one little box that I'll show you. So this is more just like stuff that we still use even though I got it in my Saxon manipulatives. Something that we use quite a bit even if we didn't have a math curriculum or something just in their own fun time are these pattern blocks. So they, they're not just specific to Saxon. You can get them on Amazon um, and you can pick them up a lot of different places but they're the typical pattern blocks and then I bought this kit here and it has 40 different designs or I think it's 20 different designs but then you can flip it over so it's not color coded so it's like harder to do when you flip it over and it's like black and white on the other side so they really enjoy those they can just pull that out whenever it's not really something that we do for regular homeschool day but it's definitely something that is a learning activity that's fun so they enjoyed those my magnetic um, dry boards those are where the letters go and objects this has actually been pared down quite a bit because I noticed we had just so many magnets that got messy and didn't use so this is a Dollar Tree magnetic board we use that quite a bit and then we keep our play-doh in there and then our play-doh like you know all the Play-Doh things are in here. Okay, so we have my table, which currently is <laughs> has stuff on it in real life, right? This is like uh, recyclables, stuff that I'm going to bring down into my basement, and we will like make crafts and stuff out of that. But right now, I just need a bin up here on the main level so I can like store that stuff instead of going down to the basement. Because if you can't tell, I'm out of breath just talking to you. I'm pregnant, and um, going up downstairs isn't my favorite thing right now, so. I just put them there on that chair that's broken anyways. <laughs> um, over here, this is our fun bin. I've talked about it before. It just has a bunch of random craft things in it. Stamps and foamy sticky letters and beads and buttons and all the things that you can just create with but not paint. Nothing really super crazy messy I mean obviously it's on the highest level so they can't reach it <laughs> but it is something that I just will, will take down and will you know sprawl everything out when they want to create something cool this is kind of overflow and not the best <laughs> I need to figure out how to do everything but this goes with my daughter's chore um, chore system which I can show you and then some play money and a basket of just things that I need to organize. <laughs> because I do have two empty bins here that I recently cleared out and I can figure out what to put in those bins to help organize things so it's not so messy. That's my paper cutter, I love this. Okay, so I know I said I would give you some mini reviews. You guys, if you don't have even just a simple Fiskars paper cutter, um, I mean, this has lasted a lot through a lot of lamination and lots of papers, so I love that thing. It saves a lot of time. This is a bin of bins, <laughs> so anytime I feel like I want another bin to organize something, I will, um, uh, you know, have a bin of empty bins, which might sound weird to you, but I really enjoy having that. <laughs> that is a binder of stickers that we uh, I've, I collected through the years of scrapbooking and then extra supplies so I recently just went into this because we're all out of glue sticks in my main glue stick drawer and so I had extra backups in here so velcro and other things and then under here I keep my Melissa and Doug easel paper rolls because I didn't have another place to put those really okay up here just 
an encouraging sign that I've had all year. We've pretty much used all of these things in here. And I love this setup for storing um, writing utensils, <laughs> utensils uh, because the whole drawer comes out like this and then you can just put it on the table and use the whole thing and then easily put it back in. And they're shallow and it's like a small little unit. It wasn't too expensive. So the one that we take out a lot are all of our twistable color pencils. And my, my daughter will just have this right next to her and then she can easily slide it back in because it's at her level, but it's also high enough for like a little baby can't get to it, but it's just, she can put it in easily. Same with the physical crayons. So really enjoy this. This is what I've got at Michael's for, I think I got it for 50% off, but I think they're like $15 or something. Mm, these are, we're, like I said, doing an insect bug unit. So we have these just sitting out. A lot of times there's a spider in there <laughs> that they find in our house or something and he's just hanging out in there. So teacher supplies. I love this right here. This is my electric pencil sharpener. It sharpens things really fast. It doesn't get clogged. Yeah, I need to empty it, but it's really nice. I haven't really used these as much as I thought I would. Maybe now that I have a planner, <laughs> I'll use them. I've used sticky notes a lot. So this is where all my sticky notes go. And then these are pretty good. This brand of uh, chalk marker. So I use that to use it to decorate our little chalkboards. Nothing really to speak of in here. Um, I did get a corner puncher, which I really like, just to be to round out some of my laminated um, laminated sheets. I like to have a corner puncher. And then this is markers and crayons. I got these on Zulily for pretty inexpensive, and my kids love those. Again, this is really nice to just have my markers and crayons here. The kids just will take out a bin and know where to put them back every time when they're done using. These are all of our coloring books, and we really don't use coloring books that often, but they're there just in case. This is our creative drawer. I haven't labeled it yet, but it's just for creativity time. So it's mainly for my daughter, but there's just different sticker books and fun things to do in here, even her drawing books down there. Highly recommend this Usborn I Can Draw People book. It is really nice for going like step by step of how to draw things for even a five-year-old or a 30-year-old who doesn't draw very well, <laughs> myself. This is blank paper and construction paper. My daughter went through a huge drawing phase recently where she was just using all of the papers and so I just kind of stocked all of that. Lined paper for different journals. Um, yeah, there's nothing much to say about that. And then all of my laminating pouches and sheet protectors and stuff that are right here. Easy for me to use or to get to. Okay, now we have all of this. This is a really good buy. I think we got this for Christmas for my kids. This is the Geo Safari Talking Microscope, and it actually has slides right here. And they came with a lot of different slides, and they're really cool because they're like not not play slides really. They have like really neat images that the kids learn to put down in here, and then they uh, learn different facts about them. So I really think this is a, a sweet microscope. My daughter also found a feather outside and put it under here and just have the, so it has the light. And you could look through there. Yeah, yeah, she's Australian. She's been the, uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so that is a really cool thing that I would highly recommend if you're looking for a kid's microscope. Even my three-year-old son loves playing with it too and learning all the things. This is my overflow slash need to laminate <laughs> slash need to put in the basement thing. Okay, so like we all have one, right? We all have a little cubby or area 
where we could just put our things in. I could even probably put those things in there so my table wouldn't be as messy, but yeah. Um, just things that I need to figure out what to do with. These are our different extra fun, writing fun. So when my son or daughter, they're just looking for something to do, but we don't have any curriculum to go over, um, we'll just pull something out like, oh, they need help with writing. Or, or let's say a curriculum went over writing the letter B, but it wasn't enough practice. So I'll just go into here and see if I have something that will supplement it. Same with workbooks. Uh, and I don't really have anything that really stood out, though. I'm trying to think. There really isn't mm, anything that's really stood out as far as something that I think is amazing. Um, and then the palettes. These these are didn't work as well as I thought they would. These are the Usborne Learning Palettes, and they just weren't the concept. I, I don't know. For some reason, my kids just didn't grasp it very well. So, um, if you're thinking about getting those... Definitely maybe look at some different reviews online and see if your kids can understand how to match them. They started to, but it still isn't something that they like love doing. <clears throat> Over here we still have my calendar. <laughs> and then they love doing that. Laminator. And then my the Melissa and Doug easel paper thing <laughs> that is actually kind of annoying. It's not the best one because it's really hard to like feed the new paper under here to cut it. So I'm not sure if there's a better paper cutter or paper dispenser, but yeah, I don't think I would recommend that one, but it's the one that we have and I will use it. <laughs> um, these are all the binders. We still, I, these are one of my favorite things that we ever invested in <laughs> are these uh, fluency binders. I've talked about them before in the things in my like uh, end of year overview and so I just have a bunch of different binders down here some folder with my daughter's favorite artwork and then this is uh, more artwork <laughs> yeah I have a kindergartner and a preschooler so there's lots of artwork and then lastly we have over here the setup of all the different supplies and pencils I always keep a highlighter out for tracing writing letters that my daughter needs to trace or something, but mostly just pencils in there, stickers for doing a good job on different learning activities. And then this is for her allowance. And I use those pretend coins because I never have enough of real money <laughs> to um, fill for her allowance. So we use just plastic coins. Her all about reading words, extra little flashcards that keep in there and we have a do a, a fun game with that a devotional on the side of this I'll take you over here first is new this week so I'll let you know how it goes but it's our responsibility tracker and I, I just kind of blacked out their last names but <laughs> uh, so yeah if they get they know their morning routine and if they do the whole thing they get they get to check it off. And then um, all these different things that are kind of a requirement of them to, or, or something or responsibility for them to do every day. If they do it with a happy heart, all the whole day, everything with a happy heart, then they get to fill, get cross out a blue ribbon. And if they get how many blue ribbons they get, they get extra points just for doing something with a happy heart. Cause I'm trying to not just teach doing things, but doing things with a happy heart. So Silas doesn't really, I didn't really focus on Silas this week. I mainly did Brooklyn and obviously he didn't do it super well. And the last bin or last little organized area over here is our curriculum that we use daily. So we are still doing all about reading, classical conversations bin, this is all of our, um, I haven't labeled it yet, but it's all of the the Good and the Beautiful's math curriculum, level K. So it fits all, all the manipulatives and even the course book and everything fits inside of one of these heavier duty or heavier duty or no, heavy duty scrapbooking bins. And these are the more cheaper scrapbooking bins that I still really like being able to just say, all right, we're gonna pull these things out, put it on the table, and then we put them away at the end of the day. 
So reason for handwriting, I am enjoying this. She's enjoying it and an empty bin. And then there's Silas's bin. I, I'm working slowly with him with the uh, Good and the Beautiful's phonics and language arts and also horizons. And then all of our different Bible curriculum so that is just a little overview of our classroom. And I actually decided last month to move a lot of our things that were involved, oops, painting and science downstairs. So I'm gonna quickly show you how I use my basement in a different area down there for something. Okay, so this is my finished basement a little area of it and I just recently put up this so we can hang up display Brooklyn and Silas's artwork uh, that's actually mostly Brooklyn's artwork from like two years ago that I just threw up there because um, we didn't have any current stuff and I just wanted to see how it would look so I just put this up last weekend <laughs> um, an old table that I refinished and put this sticker fake wood stuff on top because I liked it better Again, this is real life, so there's like stuff not really put away, but whatever. So this is our kind of our painting station too. Also doing clay and just anything. I'm not worried about this table as much as I was <laughs> worried about my upstairs dining room table. So that's kind of the more art area. And it's nice because we can leave something out to dry and it's not taking up and cluttering up our dining room upstairs and our main living area. And then over here is a new sensory table. So this is where we have all of our sand and fun bugs and things that we're doing. Um, and then some books that I have on display and our arthropod vocabulary. So I just kind of found these free printables too and decorated this a little bit. That's my Kia furniture. And then Ikea... <laughs> Uh, storage which they're obviously not all it's not even uh, that's why those screws are up there because we just got my mom just brought over a bunch of random screws to see if we can tighten it closer to the wall and make it even but I'm showing you real life okay so things aren't always perfect or even <laughs> but they're still functional and that's that's that area so this is where we have more of our messier crafts so yeah, that's that. And then quickly I'll show you where my overflow is for my curriculum. Okay, so the door that's right next to this is my office. So currently, this is where I'm keeping all of my overflow of curriculum. It's nothing fancy. This is a hand-me-down bookshelf. And I have my wedding dress crumpled up right there. Okay, so... <laughs> This is just kind of a work in progress of this whole room. It's it's just, there's my tripod for filming and there's the extra, the playroom that I didn't show you that was behind me. So, you know, um, yeah, so this is all of our books and resource books and stuff that we have overflow that I'm not necessarily going to be using right now. This is for my next unit. In the fall, we're going to be doing space. So I've already started collecting some things for the space unit for the good and the beautiful and then I have my classical conversation stuff down here so the timeline cards are in there books that are too young now for my kids that they don't really reach for that often but I still want to keep for my other kids kind of similar thing here um and then some manipulatives that we don't really use a whole lot like flashcards and things but I didn't want to throw them away or give them or give them away and then down here <laughs> is just all of our like books, like my husband and my books and how to make baby food and all of my other just random books and picture photo albums. So just these top two shelves are my overflow of curriculum so far. But around me are all of our crafts. This I need to tackle. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is just stuff that I need to get to to see if I want my baby to have that in three months or not. That's my silhouette paper cutter. And then a bunch of craft things. I need to label these drawers, but they have a bunch of craft stuff, paints and whatnots. And, and then 
same thing here. You can tell I like these storage units. Um, same thing with crafts. And then this is the reward bin. So instead of going to the store and buying something for and going hours and hours or a long time and my kid deciding what they want to buy at a store and sometimes it being silly, I decide to whenever I see something on sale or something that I know that they would like or I would like to give them, but they can wait for it and earn it, earn with their allowance. Um, this is the allowance reward bin. My idea is to go through this and put a price tag on everything so they can decide what they want to buy with their little fake money coins and kind of learn about, you know, the value of things and things aren't just free and we earned it. And so instead of going to the store, I just have an overflow of things here. And I also use this for emergency um, birthday presents for friends who, you know, if we're going to a birthday party, I'm like, well, let's see if I have something in the bin before I go out and buy them something. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's real life there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I hope that you enjoyed. Hope that maybe this was helpful for you knowing that things don't have to be Pinterest perfect to have a fun homeschool year. Um, yeah, I just slowly gather things and especially when they're on sale, if you know me, I am a deal seeker. I rarely get things for full retail price, but still you don't need all of this stuff. You don't need half of this stuff to have a great homeschool year. Um, this is just what we have and how I chose to set it up so far. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to know if you could give it a thumbs up. That would help me know that you'd like to see these kind of just really laid back, real life type of videos. I'd love to know in the comments below if your homeschool room stayed the same through the year or do you kind of change it up as you go throughout the year. So leave a comment below or maybe something that you just loved and discovered this past year. I'd love to know that too. So hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.